genre of apocalyptic writing. So it uses many uh, symbols. Uh, right. uh, Sorry, so, so, Daniel's so, so. not symbolic, it's a prophecy. Book of Daniel. So you know that prophecies yeah, symbolic, in the Bible. It's a prophecy, but there's symbolic things in it. Yeah. It's actually a prophecy, it's not all, yeah? Yeah, yeah I agree. It's yeah. about the, the It's a the prophecy end. about what's gonna happen and so forth, yeah? So, okay. so it's, I believe it's, it's, the and there is Prophet symbolic Muhammad things in is there. Prophesied, okay, uh, so in the Bible. So I agree with you yeah. that and I agree with my brother that it's a yeah. book of prophecy because in verse 1 he says I, w I was on my bed and he has these visions about the four beasts yeah. so now the issue is this <laughs> the issue is I don't see any way in scripture oh, thank you, okay. because or let me phrase it another way if you're saying that's Muhammad then a time is going to come somewhere in this history of the universe where Muhammad is going to come into the throne room of God because that vision that Daniel is having, it's clearly God sitting on, on his throne. It's clear. He's dressed in white, he's ancient of days, his white, hair is white, and he's surrounded by 10,000 times 10,000. And according to the book of Revelation chapter 5, those 10,000 times 10,000 are angels. So that means Muhammad at some point in the history of the universe is going to come into the throne of, into the throne room of God to be in the presence of God. Is that correct? Is that ten, what you're ten, saying? 10,000 can also be saints or, or humans because um, even humans can be metaphorically referred to as, as angels or uh, people that represent or uh, or like ambassadors of God. Okay. Um, so in the sense that when the Prophet Muhammad uh, conquered Mecca, yeah. um, he came with 10,000 followers. Right, right, right. Um, so so saints can 10, be... 10,000 angels okay, 10, can, can Okay, that's fair. Okay, I'll accept, I'll accept like that. This. Now, and I agree with that because the Bible also says that. However, yeah, there's a big problem. Which verse is that? Because I, I was thinking maybe Luke 24 when Jesus spoke about there should be like the angels, but do you know any other verse? Oh, who the people shall, the people of earth shall be like angels? Yeah. Oh no, yes, of course, because there's time. Even in Daniel eight, for example, he oh, mentions okay. the host, and when you look up host, comparing scripture, you'll see that host refers to angels and it refers to men. So that's oh, not okay. a problem. But my problem is this: the four kingdoms, which are Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. When mm -hmm. you look at the ruling of those kingdoms, they come mm -hmm. to an end in the year 538. 538 is when the, or 476 is when the Roman Empire is crumbling, and then the Roman Catholic Church takes precedence or comes to power around the year 538 and then for a thousand two hundred and sixty years the Roman Catholic Church rules as the, as the pagan Roman Empire ruled. So you have pagan Rome, papal Rome. After that it ends in 1798. I'm, I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm showing you, I'm giving you the timeline of Daniel 7. After 1798 we must then expect to see Muhammad because that's when that prophecy goes on. That's when that that, so that didn't courtroom scene. Islam conquered these particular lands um, in the seventh and eighth century. Uh, Babylon, uh, um, which is Iraq, Middle Persia, Persia. Uh, uh, yeah, which is Iran. Okay, I, I didn't. I'm not, I'm not aware of that. So those are predominantly Muslim countries. Okay. Are predominantly majority Muslim country. Even if you look at the letters of the, the seven churches yeah, 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 that yeah. are mentioned in Revelation, right. those are predominantly Muslim today. So they all believe Jesus is the Messiah as, as, he, as he should be. Um, and they believe that Jesus was sent by God, he's a messenger of God. Yeah. Um, and they believe that because of the Prophet Muhammad, like he called them to the God of Abraham. Right. Because they didn't believe necessarily in the God of Abraham prior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they now do as a they result. Believe. Okay. Because if you think about Christian, so I don't mean to talk too much. Um, no, 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 go on, go on. Because oh, I've uh, spoken uh, too much. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I'm just going to say, um, you know, before Islam, Arabia, yeah. um, it was stooped in sin, like in drunkenness, um, in like adultery, uh, fornication, in okay. gambling, and also murder. Yeah. Whereas um, the, the Christians at the time in the world, um, they, they were believers in monotheism. So, so like they believed in one God, okay. or, or at least okay. the, the Jewish followers of Jesus. Yes. Um, so it would make more sense uh, for God to reveal his book uh, to the Prophet Muhammad in the 7th century Arabia where he would guide them to the God of Abraham. Um, uh, I have it, a problem it, with that. It, it wouldn't make sense for the devil to go to the Arabs and take them to sin if they're already in sin. Okay, okay. Uh, fair, fair it play. would make more sense if the Jews 
uh, were on the truth or yeah. the followers of Jesus were on the truth yeah. and a devil would go to them and try to misguide them. Okay. Maybe through the works of Paul or maybe someone else, okay. I don't know. Okay, so uh, that's where I think we're going to have, uh, have differences of opinion, of course. I believe in the, re the Bible as the revealed will of God. And the reason why I can't accept in the 7th century that uh, you know, the, a new book was given is simply because um, if you, that's why I asked you earlier on, do you believe in the synoptic gospels and do you accept the synoptic gospels? Because if you do, there's going to be contradictions to what you believe as a Muslim. Yeah, I, I, and I accept that. I accept that to an extent there has been like a development um, in that um, the, the gospel writers, even the synoptics, yeah. um, they sometimes they uh, modify some of the words of Jesus and the episodes surrounding him yeah. so that Jesus becomes more Christian and less Islamic or less Muslim. Right. Um, right. And you can see this, like for example, in the Gospel of Mark, yeah. in Mark chapter 3, Jesus says, whoever does the will of God is my brother. But in, in Matthew chapter 12, um, the same saying is reported, but there Jesus says, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother. So there in Matthew, God is replaced with my Father in heaven, okay. which is a more Christian saying. Okay, but um, I mean, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, many shall come to me in that day, saying, Lord, Lord. So there's... Now, what day is he talking about? Obviously, a day when people are going to enter into second, heaven. Second coming. Second coming. Return, so, it's yeah. saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and do many wonderful things in your name? And he's going to say, I profess, I never knew you. Yeah. And then he says, but he that do, uh, and who is it that will enter? It's those who do the will of my father. Exactly. So, so the issue is, my father is mentioned in Matthew as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and that's my point. Like, yeah. Like the, the, the sayings of Jesus were passed down and they were repeated by word of mouth, but, but over time they were Christianized. Okay. So, so in Matthew it's Christianized, okay. but in Mark it's more Islamic. It's whoever does the will of God, but in Matthew it's become more Christian by so, calling God my Father in heaven. So what do you think about Jesus saying, in that day, second coming, many will come to me? Yeah, or, or not everyone who does not everyone who calls me Lord will enter, but he who does the will of my Father. Oh, so okay. m maybe Jesus originally says, he who does the will of God. Yeah. But um, over time, um, it got Christianized and changed to my Father instead okay. of my God. Because you know the Gospels, they're not tape recordings of what Jesus said. They're not like a video of cam. Of course, of course. Um, but um, they're like roughly reporting what they remember. Jesus, Jesus said and did. Yeah. And so the memories got fudged over time. So let me ask you a question. Do you call Jesus Lord? Uh, we call him Sayyid. Say which is what? Which means master. Master. Uh, and like in a rough loose translation, Lord with a small L. So just like Sarah called Abraham, my Lord. Lord. Okay. So with a small <laughs> L. So yeah. in that sense, Isa, Say Sayyidina Isa. It's interesting in the New International, which you told me to read. It's yeah. got the, the capital L, L, Lord, Lord. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but you know, there's no capitals or small letters in the Greek. Okay, that's that's um, fine. That's right. Uh, it's just it's like an interpret like in, in the English has like a interpretive bias. Okay. Uh, and NIV is like a Trinitarian. It's done by evangelical Christians. Okay. Um, so then why are you asking me to go to the New International? Uh, uh, it's because it's based upon early manuscripts compared okay, to King James. Like, you know, the, the in the British Library, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Codex uh, Sanaticanus. Right, 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 uh, right, right. So it's based upon those types of manuscripts, okay. whereas King James isn't based upon the British Library. Okay, uh, fair play. As far as, far as I know. So, okay, yeah. so fair play. So um, I believe in Mark 14, which we looked at earlier, I, I believe that Son of Man is referring to Christ and I believe, I believe in the second coming of Jesus. I believe that coming is near, I believe we're in the last days of Earth's history and I believe soon the world is going to be divided into two groups, not physically divided. I mean every man, woman and child right now are making decisions for heaven or for hell, mm -hmm. heaven for the fire or for, for uh, paradise. And so um, my issue, why I'm coming here to Speaker's Corner is to share what I believe the truth is. But, you but know? do you think it's possible you believe in something which may never happen in your own lifetime? Um, so Jesus may not actually return in your lifetime because if you look at the New Testament, yeah. people were expecting Christ to return, but he never did. Yeah. 
um, and you see that over time yeah. the, the the date of his coming is yeah. extended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it becomes more more delayed. Well, he himself said, "No man knows the day or the hour." So that's a fair, yeah. fair comment. But what I believe, well, but okay, then, go on. But then, then you do actually know because in second, because you know in First Thessalonians, which yeah. Paul wrote. Uh, Paul says um, his return will be like something that you don't know when it will happen. Night, yeah. It will take you by surprise. Okay. But then in his second letter, in Second Thessalonians, yeah. which some scholars don't believe he wrote, because in chapter two he says that before Jesus returns, there will be signs. Right. And those signs will be indication that now the hour is near. Yeah. So in two Thessalonians, you will have some signs. Yeah. Uh, so it won't take you by surprise like of a course. thief in the night. Even Jesus. But in 1 Thessalonians, which is like the earliest writing of the New Testament. Yeah. Because you know, uh, 1 Thessalonians is like the first of the New Testament writings to be written. No, I didn't know that. It, even know. though it comes later in, in, yeah. in, in the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's 27 books. Yes, yes. And yes. about 14 are attributed to Paul. Yes. Um, so uh, Paul's letters, like when Paul converted to Christianity, um, there was no gospel for Paul to read and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. become. Yeah, yeah. But um, he converted through like a an experience that he had. Yes. Um, so he wrote one Thessalonians as his first or earliest letter in the New Testament. So in that letter, he was expecting Jesus to return because right. he says in one Thessalonians chapter four, yeah. um, I believe it's verse sixteen. Yeah. Um, he says, "We who are still alive yeah. and remain upon the earth." Yeah. Uh, shall be united with Christ in the air. Yes. So he's expecting Jesus to return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, uh, like he says, I'm um, in chapter. No, but he didn't expect Jesus to return because you just quoted Second Thessalonians chapter two, where he says that day will not come except they come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. Exactly. So the Antichrist would come before Jesus would come. Uh, so uh, and this is why. Um, M many uh, scholars don't think that Paul wrote two Thessalonians. Okay. I'm like, not a scholar, but I believe like that. Like Dale Martin, um, I believe Raymond Brown possibly as well. Okay, I don't know these guys, um, but... Uh, uh, yeah. You've heard of obviously Bart Ehrman. Bart who? Uh, Bart Ehrman. No, I haven't heard of any of these guys. Oh, okay, doesn't matter. But anyway, no. um, there's a point that I wanted to make on First Thessalonians 4. You just quoted it, verse 16. It mm. says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So Paul is telling us in the first Thessalonians, in the one you just said, is one of the first um, um, letters that he wrote. Yeah. He's saying, and by the way, in that letter he said, Beloved, I'm writing you these things so that you know that we can have hope, basically. But he's saying, a time will come where the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, he's saying, and with the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So he's saying those who have died as believers, faithful believers, will come out of their graves and unite to meet him in the air. And we who are still alive yes, and remain right. will, will um, not precede those who have now fallen asleep, but yeah. with the trumpet will be united with them in the air exactly. with Christ. So do you believe that? So, well, if, uh, Paul, in Paul's time, he thought this would happen in his own lifetime. Yeah. But it never happened. And so, you know, second letter of Peter, yeah. um, it says a thousand years before the Lord is like, a, like uh, a day before the Lord yeah. is like a thousand years of our reckoning. Okay. And a thousand years of our reckoning is like a day before the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it like extends the, uh, the parousia or the time, whereas um, early on it was expected that Jesus would actually return yeah. within the lifetime of the generation of, of Christians. Um, I, I disagree with that statement. I, I agree with Paul's letter in the Second Thessalonians, um, and I think it's clear, even from the one you just quoted, it says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep, because they were sorrowing, they were grieving because people had died. And yeah. he said, listen, and don't worry. And the second coming didn't happen. There, there would be a resurrection. So he's talking about resurrection. That's what he's talking and about. And he refers to Jesus as the first fruit of the resurrection. Okay. And you know when the first fruits appear? Yeah. You know that's an indication that now it's very close. Yes. That the, the rest of the harvest will now come yes, about. Yes, it will come, yeah. So uh, Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection. And so yeah. now, any time now, now, yeah. it's going to happen now, the resurrection. But it, it didn't, and this is why 2 Peter says a thousand years of yeah, our record is like it. Also, didn't Paul um, tell the people not to 
not to um, if you if you weren't rich yet, not to want to get rich. Exactly. Not to, all of these things because the, the so, COVID was so, so you close. know if you really no, want to have money, yes. No, no, no. He didn't say. He said don't last after riches. He didn't say don't. He, there were rich people in the Bible. Abraham was a very rich man. No, no, Job no. was a very rich man. No, I, so, I think what he means is like he's Paul says in one Corinthians chapter seven. Yeah. To the married, I say remain married, and to yeah. the single, do not get married. Yeah. Yeah. Like remain as you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, he was expecting Jesus to come back. I don't. Because he said with a twinkling that. of the eye. No, no, no. I don't think um, he was thinking that. Because he says in Second Thessalonians chapter two, and mm -hmm. if you see this, and I, I'm not, I don't care what uh, scholars say. I'm going by what God's word says. Mm -hmm. It says, "Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come." Second coming, which is first first and second verses, that they shall not come except they come a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. Now he goes into depth who this man of sin is. And when you contrast this man of sin with Daniel chapter 7, it is this power that is going to exalt itself. And that power comes after the Roman Empire, after 476. So Paul didn't expect Jesus but, to know, come. If you read day. that same chapter it would, in chapter 2 of yeah. Second Thessalonians, um, he says, um, anyone yeah. Um, let me just. Shall um, I go to the new international? Or are you okay? Yeah. Um, I think it should be okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Verse three. Let no man deceive you by yeah. any means. Yes. For the day shall not come except they come falling always first, and that man of sin be revealed in, in the son of uh, perdition. Son of perdition. Yeah. So, so he, he's saying actually it'd be better if you could read NIV. Okay. Let me go uh, to the NIV quickly. Or, yeah, hold on, let, let me get it, because... Um, oh boy, I need to... I think this will be the last point, because otherwise... No worries, no. My wife no. is not gonna... Oh, that's nice. Uh, I didn't know you were married. Don't worry, man. If you're married, stay married. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's coming quickly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the same verse. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come until the until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. Okay? Yeah, so what else? Yeah, so there's a, a verse um, where Paul says in the same chapter, in chapter yeah. 2, yeah. Um, that um, do not anyone like deceive you and tell you that the hour is near. Um, even if they're claiming that this letter has been written by me or by, by, by my hand. Um, and the, the reason why Paul says that is because he's indirectly, he's denying um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, where he speaks about like the... Um, the Verse 15. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. He's saying hold fast to the teachings. Yeah, with regards to th this particular letter, but in terms of like the, the he's saying like what one Thessalonians, the, the, the previous letter, yeah. um, he's saying indirectly yeah. um, that this isn't my letter because it's, it's saying that the uh, the parousia or the yeah. second coming will be something that will come and take you by surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, um, we can we can agree I, to yeah, but I just want you to adjust this point. The one yeah. First Corinthians, where is he saying um, those who are single they can just remain because the end is coming. First, is, Let's is go there because I don't think that's what it says. But I, I'll do my best. I may not be able to because I, I may need to go and look look at that. But uh, I'll look at it. First Corinthians seven, did you say? I don't think it deals with why. Okay, here we go. Now, the context is what? The context is, it begins by saying, let me get to the New International because we need to uh, get the context as well. Second Corinthians, seven, yeah? Okay, so therefore, since we have these, pro uh, is that the right one? Is Was it, oh, is it First Corinthians, sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. Okay. Oh boy, guys, it's freezing now. <laughs> You're cold. <laughs> I'm cold, man. My feet are freezing. I need it in my boots now. I don't okay. feel cold, actually. Now, this is the issue. This is the context. Yes. 
Now, for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman, but since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. So the the context is dealing with sexuality. No, that's not the one. That's not the one. Yeah, of course. Further down, it gets to the part. Yeah, yeah. So now to the married. Uh, let's see. To the married. Uh, now to the unmarried and the widows. I say it is good for them to stay unmarried, as I as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To the married, I have. I give this command, not I, but the Lord. I, a wife, must not separate from her husband. So where is it that is? Is, the, this, is this First Corinthians? This is First Corinthians. I think chapter seven. I or think um, else? yeah, First Corinthians chapter seven. That's what I'm reading here. Okay, so he says to the married, I say remain married, and to the single, I say. Uh, remain single, yeah. but but he says it's better, like like he says it's better if you're like me, which yeah. is uh, I'm married because you know when you're married, like now you have to go to your wife, like yeah. you have to go back to your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if if you were not married, yeah. then you would have more time to be at the of course <laughs> to, to, to do work for the Lord, to do work. So for this God. is what Paul says: it's better if you're not married. Yeah, you? but that's because he says the time of the Lord is near. Okay. Okay, it's but I didn't see that in the verse. It's in chapter seven of First Corinthians. Show me the show um, me the verse, and then because, like I said, yeah. I can go and look at it, and then come because just show me where it says that. Okay, uh, um, by the way, the other place in Thessalonians it was actually uh, chapter two, verse two, and uh, not verse three. Uh, okay. But yeah, in terms of um, the the married life, um, he basically says, um, if anyone thinks that he is behaving properly. And dies. Um, yeah, so they are like verse 32. 32. I would like you to be free from concern. An yeah. unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how he can please the Lord. That's exactly uh, what you said. I agree. Yeah. Verse 33, is it? Yeah, and then c carry but on. But a yeah. married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife. And his interests are divided. An unmarried ma woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both spirit, body, and spirit. So where exactly? Uh, so this, uh, I say this for your own benefit. I say this for your own. Uh, where where is that? Uh, thirty-five. Okay, I'm saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but you may live in a right way in undivided devo devotion to the Lord. Uh, so so he. Go on, I get. Uh, so, so he's, say, he's saying that because time is short, or t t um, he's saying it's better to remain single so that you can devote yourself fully. Uh, maybe it does say that. I'll have a look at it. Maybe it does say that. I will have a look at it. and Because uh, in the same chapter, I remember reading, um, he says time is short. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I'll just Google it. Uh, First Corinthians uh, chapter 7, he let me, says... Let me also Google it quickly. Um, Sorry. Yeah, verse 29. 29, okay, here we go. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that time is short. That the time is short. Yes. From now on, and those who have wives should live as if they do not. Yes. Okay, fair play. So he's saying that um, if you were like me, um, then you can be at Speaker's Corner full time, and then you wouldn't have to divide your time. Yeah. Between you know your your partner, your wife, um, and okay, fair point. I get I get I get that point. That point's clear. Uh, now to dealing with the issue of so time. So he's expecting Jesus to come yeah. back. I don't believe that because in Second Thessalonians yeah. he says time is short, but um, I believe that according to the Bible, prophets could be given vision, given understanding of God's will, and that and they could grow in their understanding. So for example, we have um, uh, a. Um, who is it? Nathan the prophet. Nathan the prophet came to David. David said, I want to build the Lord's house in the book of Chronicles. He said, I want to build a house for the Lord. And Nathan the prophet comes to him. He says, go and get the, and do the will of the Lord. Build the house of the Lord. Nathan goes home. God gives him a vision and he says, Nathan, David has too much blood on his hand. Go back to him. Tell him not to build the house of the Lord, but to gather the materials. His son Solomon will build the house of the Lord. So prophets at times 
uh, received an understanding, but they grew in their understanding. It wasn't like they received a vision and they knew everything. No. So I believe, according to Second Thessalonians chapter two, Paul says, "Brothers, I'm writing to you, knowing that the day of the Lord will not come until the Antichrist is revealed." Yeah, he says, "If anyone says that the day of the Lord is near, yeah. um, th 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 then this is this, and says this is from us. Yeah. This is not from us." Okay, but, but, so but in one Corinthians, he does say. Time is short. Okay, time but, is near. Yeah. Okay, fair play. Uh, that's something I can look uh, well, at. But let's think is, about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is, time is enough. short. But, uh, it is short yeah, in this uh, life. I, I, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to score a point or win a debate or argument. No, no, I, no. At the no, end of the no. day, both me and you, we both care about the truth. Amen. Like we care about one another's, like you know. What's your name, by the way? Anaz. 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 Or it's Nasam. Nasam. But you can call me Naz. Naz. Nice to meet you. Sorry to cut it short. No, no, no. Righteousness. But next time, yeah. We can God willing, God willing. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yes, yes, Should yes, I yes. give you my number or is that easy? You know what, I'm going to, yeah, let me. Yeah, you don't have to give, give me yours. Uh, no, 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 take my number, I don't mind. You take my number rather. Uh, it's easy if I give you. Um, okay. What do I do then? Uh, oh, I just scan my, my what's his name, is it? Uh, exactly. Yeah, wow, exactly. man, you guys are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's on his own plane, man. Well, you guys oh, are serious, oh. man. <laughs> so how do I just, okay, so take me today. Is that what it does, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, uh, no internet connection. So now you that don't need to sense. sneak your number on the camera, you just, you just go. Oh, let me try that again. I take it you have the Quran, like translation of the Quran. Add to context. So. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. Okay. Yeah, it just makes it more easy. So. Wow, okay. Nazam, yeah? You don't need to speak your number. Okay. Over here. <laughs> yes, Nazam. Do, do you got a translation of the Quran? I don't have. Uh, I don't um, have. I can get you one. Listen, 